Okay, so you want to create a fillable form in Google Docs. So this is the form we're going to create. You've got these text fields here that you can type into. You've got drop down lists here. You've got checkboxes here, and you've got larger text fields that you can type into or the end user can type into. Okay, let's see how this can be done. So I've got my blank document. The first thing I'm going to do is add my logo. So I'm going to go to insert image. I'm going to upload it from this computer. I'm going to center this image. I can do that up here on the toolbar, go to the align button and center it. Then I'll come down a couple of lines and I'll write the heading course registration. Just make that a little bit larger. So I select that text and then increase the font size up here. And I might make it bold. Then I need a subheading. So I'm going to come down two lines. I'm going to left align this subheading. Decrease the font size. And this subheading refers to personal details. And I'm going to press enter again. So this is where we're going to collect information such as the name, date of birth, telephone number and postcode. So to create the text boxes for the personal details, we're going to insert a table. So to do that, I go to insert and then table, and I want four columns and three rows. Now, don't worry about the borders. We're going to get rid of the borders that we don't want eventually. But for now, we're just going to type in the labels for our text fields. Before we do that, let's just change the font size for this table. So I've selected all the cells and then up here I can change the font size. I change it down to 12. So now I can type in my labels, name, and I'm tapping through these cells, then date of birth. Now I'm going to miss this row and go down to the last row. I've got telephone number. And then I want the postcode or the zip code. Now I'm going to adjust the column widths. Okay, let's deal with these borders. I'm going to take them all off to begin with. So to do that, right click in your table and then go to table properties. And you want to expand this color option. And then you can change the table border thickness to zero points. So now we want to reinstate some dashed lines for each text field that the end user needs to complete. Now to do that, what you can do is click on this little drop down button here. So I'm in the cell that's going to collect the name. I click on this little drop down and I'm going to select the bottom border. So that selects the bottom border. Then up here on the toolbar, you can specify border width. So I'll say one point. And then here, I'm going to specify the border dash. So then I need to do the same thing for the other cells. Now, because I've done it this way, if I type into a text box, it doesn't overtype the line. Now, what I will do for these text boxes is just take the bold style off just to visually distinguish the labels from the user entries. So now we're going to move on to the next section of the form. So I'm going to come down a line and this is going to collect course details. Now I'm also going to put this section in the table. So for this table, I need two columns and five rows. So the next thing I'm going to do is just change the font size again. So let's change that to 12. And I'm going to lengthen the width of this first cell. So the first question is, which location do you wish to attend? Now for this, I want a drop down list of locations. So I'm going to click in this cell. I'm going to go to insert and drop down. And I'm going to go for a new drop down. You don't need to worry about a template name. 
just type in your location. So I've got Birmingham, I've got London, I've got Manchester, I've got Liverpool. And if I want to add another option in the drop down, I just click on new option here. And that can be Glasgow. And you can even specify colors for these different options. And then click on save. So now I have that drop down list with those locations. So the next question is which courses are you interested in? Now I don't want a drop down list for this because with the drop down list you can only select one item in the list. I want the end user to be able to select multiple courses. So to do that, I'll just start by typing the courses in. Now I'll take the bold off this cell and within the cell, I'm going to press enter as if I was creating a list in the cell. So those are my three courses. What I do is I select them. Then I'm going to go up to the toolbar and I'm going to click on this more button here. And here is an option for checklists. So if I go to the drop down, I've got two options here. The first actually strikes through anything that's ticked. So that's almost like saying it's complete. I don't want that. I want this option here. So that gives me my check boxes. Right, we'll have one more drop down list. How are you funding your course? So as a reminder for the drop down list, you go up to insert and then drop down, new drop down, and then you just type in the values that you want to appear in the drop down. And don't forget, if you wanted colors for these different items, you can always go back to edit options and then specify colors. But the last part of the form that we're creating is just going to be a big box where people can tell us what they want to get out of the course. So tell us what you want to learn. Now to achieve this, you create another table, but it only needs to include one cell. So you just go insert table and choose one cell. And then if you press enter until the box becomes big enough, then people can type into that box. So what you'd probably want to do is reduce the font size. So I'll take that down to 12 and then take bold off. And then you have some space for the end user to type in some text. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.